Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you how you can remove, clean and replace various keys on a variety of keyboards. So on desktop keyboards normally it's really easy because they're a one piece design and that's this one, this one and this one. But when it comes to laptops and this is the remains of an old netbook then it can be a lot harder because normally those keys are a three piece design. So if you have a look at the keys here, this, these are commonly what they look like. Now this one here is one from a desktop computer. It's just one piece design that you can just pop off, clean and then pop back on again. But these ones are more complicated but with a bit of practice you can still do it yourself. Now if you have a look it's a three piece design. We've got the key, the key retainer there in the middle and then that little bit that touches the pressure pad. It's kind of like a little rubber spring that then allows the key to spring back up again. Again this is on the laptop so it's bigger but you've got the key You've got the little key retainer and then the little rubber thing that squishes down onto the pressure pad and then pops the key back up again. Right, okay, so uh, what do you need for this? Really simple, all you need is a little flathead screwdriver. On some keyboards you can use a blunt knife. Even on some of the older keyboards you can just use a spoon to lever up the keys. We're also going to need some little Q-tips, we call them earbuds in the UK but the rest of the world most commonly know them as Q-tips and uh, this is for getting into the keys and around and giving them a good clean. Sometimes some long nose pliers can come in handy especially if your fingers are quite big then you won't need these when it comes to the desktop keyboards but when it comes to these three piece keys on the laptop and the netbook then sometimes these can come in handy to just help you hold while you're trying to push one down and just lever it off with the long nose pliers. So if you've got these it could help. And in the UK we call it surgical spirit. This is to help clean the keys. In other parts of the world, probably in America, you would know this is rubbing alcohol. It's very cheap, doesn't cost a lot of money, but you may not have to use this. You might just get away with a dry Q-tip if it's just a build up of a bit of uh, debris and dust and stuff. But obviously if you've spilt stuff down there, if you spill a can of coke over it and it's all sticky then you will probably need a surgical spirit or the rubbing alcohol just to give it a good clean out. Right, so I'm going to show you a variety of how to pop them off to begin with and then uh, what I'll do is I'll pop off two keys on each of them and then I'll replace one of the keys and then I'll leave the other key out and show you how to clean them. Basically cleaning them on all of them is going to be a, a pretty similar thing. Now before you even do any of this make sure everything's unplugged so just unplug it from your computer make sure your laptop's off and before you start you may get away with just giving it a good blow so if you blow into the keys that's sticking and for example if the P's sticking just keep hitting it repeatedly just to try and free it up because sometimes it could be just a little bit of grime down the side of it and by blowing it and hitting it a few times you might loosen it up enough just to let it start working again. If you do all that and it's still not working then you are going to have to pop the key off to give it a good clean underneath. Now obviously if after cleaning it and you pop the keys back on it's still not working then there's not really much else you can do. It's going to be a lot more involved to try and get into the actual pressure pads underneath and the price of keyboards you're probably as well off just to go out and buy a new keyboard because it might not be the the fact that there's grime or anything in it it could be the fact that it's worn out underneath but this video will help if you've spilt something on it or it's just dirty and grimy so let's start with this keyboard here This is a one piece design keyboard, these keys, because this is from a, a desktop. So this is gonna be, should be a nice straightforward one. So let's get our little flathead screwdriver and let's pretend now that the O is not working properly. So we can go in to the sides, the top, the bottom, it makes no difference. All we need to do is just slightly get under there and just lever it out like so. And so just lever that out and you can see how easy it pops out. Let's just do, Another one, let's do the Y over here, again just go underneath it and you can see that they just pop out and if you have a close up look at them you'll be able to see that it's just held into place by two little retaining clips here and here so there's really not much to it at all. So basically all we need to do to clean this one would be Get your Q-tip, rub it in a little bit of surgical spirit and then just 
clean around the edges here because it could be these edges that are sticky. So give that a good clean. And then if you were to look in the keyboard itself, you can just give it a good clean all around these grooves here. Yeah, inside this bit here and just on the outside. If the Q-tip's slightly too big, you can always get a little screwdriver and you can just scrape around these outer bits here just to give it a good clean all the way around. And when it comes to popping them back on, what I would say, if you're taking off a bunch of keys, it's fine if you're just taking off one key, but if you're going to be taking off a bunch of keys, definitely take a picture of your keyboard, because it's amazing when you take a few of them off, you will forget where they go back on again. So take a picture or write it all down on a bit of paper, the order of the numbers. And I mean, you can see now on this particular key here, you can see that there's something, some bit of food or something caught here. Yeah. So often just by tapping it upside down, you'll get the debris and stuff out of it. But if you have a look closely in here, you can see the remains of food and stuff in this bit here. And what happens is that can cause it to stick. Yeah. Now to put them back on, really straightforward. All we do is make sure you've got the key the right way up. So don't put it on upside down. Make sure it's the right way up. And then on this particular keyboard, all you do is apply a bit of pressure and they pop back into place again. And this one here, we just pop it in like so. Okay, so that's it, nice and straightforward. Now let's try this keyboard here. This is a Logitech wireless keyboard. Again, same principle. You either use a knife, spoon, or screwdriver. Again, the flathead screwdriver is going to be the easiest, but let's use a knife on this one. So you can see I've got a nice bit of room here to be able to prise the keys out. So I'm just going to put the knife in there like so, and just nice and gently just pop that out. And if you have a look at this one here, again, you can see it's just held into place by two little retaining tabs, one here, and the other one here. So it's just those two bits that clip it into place there and there. So with this one again, you would soak your Q-tip in surgical spirits, rubbing alcohol, and just give it a good clean round there. And when it comes to the keyboard here, it's quite nice in this one because there's more room to work with. So you can really get in there and give it a good clean. And you can even go inside there and give it a good clean. Now, you don't want to have it desaturated. So let's actually put a little bit of surgical spirits on it. Obviously, keep this one away from your kids and stuff. But all we need to do is just a tiny little bit in the lid there. And I'm just going to just do that. It doesn't need to be absolutely dripping. Just have that much on it and the good thing about this is it will just evaporate off so what I'll do is I'll just go in here give it a good clean now this is a new keyboard here so it's not going to cause any problems but as you can see it's wet at the moment but leave that for about a minute and that will evaporate off and we'll do the same with the key just give it a good clean around the place like so okay so I'm going to let that dry before I put it on. In the meantime, I'm going to do this one here. And this is a very old keyboard here. So with something like this, you can even use a spoon to get them off. So for example, if I wanted the letter J off, just get my spoon in there and then just lever it off like so. And if you have a look at this one, it's the same principle again. You see there's two little tabs there to keep the key in place. And if you have a look in there, you can see, but on this one you can see a little bit more grime around it. So we'll get our Q-tip and just give it a good clean round there. And you can see that the, the dirt is starting to come off onto it. Clean on the inside as well. And then get the key and give that a clean 
on this bit here. Because remember this bit is moving up and down inside that shaft. Right, okay, so I'll let that dry for a minute. Now if we have a look at this one, it's starting to dry, it's starting to kind of go, there's a few little droplets there, so it needs a little bit longer before I put the key back on. There's just more chance of it drying quicker when the air can get to it. Obviously you can put it back on, it will dry, but if you uh, if you just leave it off for a good minute or two, then it's gonna it's gonna dry. Okay, now we'll get on to the harder ones. Let's talk about the, the laptops and the netbooks. Now with this one here you can see that if you look closely at them, so for example all these keys have been taken off already, so let's just go to the one next to the F5 here. If you have a look, you can see that it's hinged up the top and that moves up and down and basically it's got two little bits there that clip onto the key and also at the bottom of these holes here it will also clip onto the key. So if we were to have a look at the bottom of the key, then you can see there that there's two bits there that clip onto that top bit and there's also, or the bottom bit, that's the bottom, so this is the bottom of the key this side, so these two, let's put it the right way around. So as you can see there's two bits that clip onto the bottom of the key and then these two bits are where the tabs go into. But luckily when we get that key retainer on, normally with the keys you can just actually force them into place and they will be just fine. So if we were to have a look at the actual key retainer itself. It's normally in two parts and it's pivoted in the middle. So the fiddly bit is when you take it apart, often you, when you take this out you have to separate them to get it out because you risk breaking them otherwise and half the battle is is putting the bits in the right place and not getting them back to front. So sometimes you have to take the key off next to the key you're working on just to remember how it went back together. And the other thing we have to take note of is where it's hinged as well. So if you have a look at these top keys here, they are hinged at the top, so they're retained up the top. But then if you look at these ones here, they're retained on the side, the right hand side here. So depending on the key, you will need to have a look at where it's retained. So these ones are all on the side, but then when we go over to here, they're on the top again. So it kind of looks like the bigger keys are on the side and then the smaller ones are up the top, so you will have to you will have to check that one out. Right, let's say we wanted to get rid of F12 up here. So what we're going to do again use a screwdriver to prise it off. Okay. And then what we have to do is we have to try and lever these little levers away because basically I'll show you, I mean I'll show you one of these. Sometimes you can just use brute strength. So if you do that, you can see that that's actually popped off really nice. And it, and if I have a look, you see it popped off nice. But if you see, I've broken that little tab there. There's a little tab here, but it's not there. And what will happen is now one of the tabs won't be able to go into one of those retaining bits there. So although sometimes you can be lucky and you can just use brute strength to rip it off, the problem is you can end up breaking some of the tabs. So if you do it this way, it will take a lot longer, but at least you know you're not going to break anything or it's less likely to break something. So let's go back to this F12 one here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lever out. You see I'm levering out these side bits and I'm going to lever out the side bit there. And that will get rid of the pivot in the middle because there's a little pivot there that goes in the middle. So I'm just going to lever that out and lever this out, there you go, like so, now I'm going to do the same on this side here, it's hard to do because I'm trying to look through the camera, and there you go, now the bottom bit's freed itself, and now the top bit will just come straight out, 
So what we're going to now do is we're just going to put this to one side and I'm just going to put this back together. Right, we want to be able to put this bit here back into the hole here and we want to do the same on the other side as well. So basically, obviously it's easy to get into one side but then this side we're going to have to bend it back in again. So I'm going to bend it out and pop it back in like so. And now if you have a look, that's how it levers itself in the middle. And we've still got the two bits up there and the two bits down here, so nothing's broken. So let's go to, let's just put that down, and let's go to the F9, the F12 key here that we took off. So as you can see, we've got the little rubber bit that goes in the middle there. So hopefully you won't have to remove that. Sometimes they just pop off, depend on the design. But again, if you get your Q-tip and you were to give it a good clean around it, like so, and then just give this bit clean as well, and also the key. So if you give the key a good clean. Now fitting it back again, what we have to do is, if you're not sure how to do it, just pop off the key next to it. If you have a look up here, you can see that there's a little metal catch up the top here. But basically, if you just hook it on, so this is where the long no pliers can come in handy, but if you just hook on that top bit, like so, and then normally, the bottom bits will kind of just press into place like that. Did you hear it click? Now, if you do that and it doesn't look right or feel right, chances are it's been put on the wrong way round. But if you have a look there, you can see that. You can see it just moving up and down ever so slightly. And it looks right. So what we do is now to pop the key back on, we just have to line it up and then just press it down, It should you should hear it click into place, so listen, there we go, and if you have a look, you can see now, that's the same level as the other keys, and you can see it's pushing in nicely, if when you, if when you push it in, it's completely flat, chances are you've got it the wrong way around, or when you were putting it together again, it went the wrong way around, so that's why sometimes it's handy to take off another key, and have a look at that one and see how it goes. Sometimes you might even have to take off another key if when you took off that one, it came flying apart and you couldn't see how it went back together. But you will be able to get it eventually just by studying the other ones, you will see how it goes together because there's only so many combinations of doing it. I mean, you can't place it upside down because it's not gonna place onto it. So you've got two parts. So yeah, you may get it wrong and then put it on. And if the key is completely depressed when it goes in like that, then take it off and swap it round turn it over and put it back together again and then hopefully you'll find that's the right one. Now that's a netbook one so that was quite hard to do because it's so small and fiddly. I'm going to show you it on this laptop here and hopefully it will make more sense. Now just before I do that if you have a look at the keyboard that I put the stuff in earlier can you now see it's completely evaporated off but it's nearly there's still a little bit still just a little bit up there I mean what you can do is you can get a dry q-tip and just rub it around there just to get the remains off. If you have a look at the key there now, there's nothing on that. So we can put that one back on. Now I presume with this one, there is no right and wrong way because it's the letter I, so it should be just in the middle. So now with this, we just click it in, like so. And you will see now that it's the same level as the other keys and it just feels nice and loose. Right, okay, that's that one. Let's just check on this one before we go on to the laptop. Again, if you have a look in there, it looks like it's nice and dry now. And with this one, we just get the key. We just pop it on there like so, and if you listen, there we go, back in again. Same level as all the other keys, like that. Right, let's do this laptop one now. Okay, now let's take a key off this laptop here. Now, again, this is a three-piece design. So let's go for the letter P. Let's just zoom in there. Okay, now on this one here, we're just going to use a knife to pop it off. So we get the knife underneath it here, and just nice and gently 
just try to lever it off. There we go. Okay, and if you were to have a look, it's the same design as the key from the netbook, where it's got clips on at the bottom there and two little bits that the lugs slide into there. Right, so hopefully you won't have to actually get involved with the key retainer because with your Q-tip you can get a nice little bit of rubbing alcohol and just give it a good clean. You can even take out that little black rubber spring retainer and give it a good clean give the key a clean like so and then you should be able to just pop it back on so put the black rubber thing back on when it's all dried you should be able to just pop that back on and if you have a listen there we go normally it will just click back into place when you line it up and push it down. But I will show you how to take out the retaining, retaining clip if you need to. So let's go to the O next to it and let's just lever this one off. Like so. Right, okay, so that's that one off. Now when it comes to the retaining clip, again, it's the same sort of principle as before. If you have a look closely, you will see that it's pivoting up. So let's just move the camera a little bit. You will see that it's pivoted along the middle there and then it allows the top and the bottom to lift up and down. And you can see that there's a little metal retaining catch here. So that's the bit that we're gonna to have to put in first when, remo re when we remove it. Now, sometimes you might be lucky and you can just use brute strength to force it out. So let me just show you now if I was just to force it out like so. Let's see if I've broken anything. So no, that time I was lucky. And if you have a look here, it's all intact. So still got the two little lugs down the bottom here and here intact. And this is the bit that will clip onto the top. So let's just pop that back in. So hopefully you won't have to separate them because you should be able to get the key off without damaging it and then you should be able to clean it without damaging it. But if you do need to actually get under it, so in this instance here, then the camera can pick that up, but look at the amount of dirt that's in here. So if you look at that bit there, you can see it's all caught here. There you go, so look at the dirt on that. Right, and obviously when it's all dry, you can pop it back in. Right, so we need to put in this little bit first. So you know that little retaining bit I showed you, that's gonna go on this bit here. So that's the bit that needs to go in first. And obviously it needs to go that way down because I won't be able to get the retaining clip on properly if we were to go that way. So that tells you which way you need to put it down. So this is gonna be the first bit that needs to connect to it, this thinnest bit here. So we're just going to put it on the top bit first, like so, and then get it into place and hopefully we should be able to just ease that into place and it should click. There we go, and now let's just give it a test, there you go, you can see it's moving up and down. Get the key back on it, oh I forgot the little black rubbery bit to help it spring back up, line up the key over it and just listen for the click. There we go, there we go. Okay, so now that's clicked in fine. So let's move to the next one along and this one I'm actually going to separate the insides to show you. So let's go to the eye. Again, just take the key off. Hopefully you can do what you need to do, but if you can't, I'm just going to take this off here. This time I'm going to separate it out in case you're worried about breaking it. So what we need to do is we need to take off the pivots that go in. So if you have a look, it's pivoted in the middle. So I need to ease this outer section out so that the, it will come away from the inner section. So I'm just going to use some long nose pliers to grab this little bit here. And 
and now I'm going to ease this section out like so ease it out on that side as well and there we go two bits so to save confusion now I'm just going to put that straight down and I'm not going to flip it over or anything like that so let me zoom out I'm just going to put that down here and I'm not going to turn it or twist it and I know it came off that way and then this one I know this one came off that way as well so that's how they have to go back together obviously now you can do all your cleaning in here make sure it's nice and clean spend a bit of time blow it out clean it up you can also clean up the little bit of rubber as well right okay so now we need to put it back together so I'm just going to show you this middle section if we have a look at it you can see that if you look at the top bit there which goes on to the little metal retaining bit you can see that it's lower on one side it doesn't go straight across it's like stepped in so if you have a look here you can see it's stepped in there so that's the bit that needs to go down so we're going to keep everything the right way up so I know it's going this way in and basically we need to now put it back together so we just need to line up the holes put in that side then put in this side like that okay and if you have a look from the side you can see it's nice and flat so you know when you put it back together if it's not lying completely flat then if for example it was like that and if you spin it over and it's nice and flat that's fine but if no matter how you spin it if it's not lying flat when you do it on one side you know then that you've done it wrong okay so now we're going to put it back on and again this bit is going to be the bit that clips in first so I'm just going to use my pliers so you can see it more easily like so and I'm just going to rest it down there like that and now we need to get the two little tabs at the bottom into the little retaining bit so I'm just trying to use my finger now and I'm just going to try to ease it ease it in There you go, and you heard it click into place. And just give it a little lift up to make sure it is lifting up. There we go. Okay, so now we get the little middle rubber spring bit and put it into place there. And we get our key and we just put it back into place. And there we go. You can see now that the key is fully on again. Yeah. And that's it. So as you can see, depending on what you're working on, it's a lot easier working on the desktop keyboards. But when it comes to the laptops, they can still be repaired, your laptops and your netbooks. If you just take a little bit of time and look at how it's been put together, then you will be able to repair it yourself. Right, I hope you found the video useful. Please give it a thumbs up if it helped you out. And please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care. Bye now.